The instructions to build an organism are written in its genome. But these instructions are not read out in a simple linear fashion like a book. A portion of the genome specifies how to make all the different building blocks of an organism. These building blocks are the products of the genes. And in humans, they comprise less than 2% of the total genome sequence. Of equal importance, the genome must specify which combination of blocks and how many of each type get used to make each different cell type. A muscle cell and a neuron both have the same genome, but they look different and behave differently because of the distinct combinations and quantities of the products of the different genes deployed in each cell type. These instructions, which are called enhancers, are also encoded in our genome sequence, distributed around the genes they control, sometimes at great distances. For example, this enhancer sequence may instruct a hind limb cell to use a certain amount of gene A, and this sequence direct a different amount to be used in a brain cell. In order to connect these regulatory sequences with the genes they control, the genome must fold. And in order to read the genomic instructions of life, we must therefore understand not only the linear sequence of the bases, but also its 3D organization in the cell. I'm Alistair Bedecker. For the past four years, with the support of the Beckman Young Investigator Award from the Arnold Beckman Foundation, my team and I have been studying the 3D structure of the genome and developing cells. Like many of the questions that Arnold Beckman tackled in his scientific career, our ability to study and understand the 3D structure of the genome has been limited by our technology. Drawing inspiration from such transformative inventions as the pH meter and photospectrometer, my team designs, builds, and programs optical mechanical instruments that enable us to photograph the 3D structure of the genome inside a cell, from the shorter range loops, some five to 500 kilobase in length, to the structure of whole chromosomes. With these instruments, we can see for the first time a snapshot view of the 3D arrangement of DNA sequence within an interphase nucleus that is actively undergoing transcription and gene regulation. In this example, we see a snapshot from a thoracic cell in a 10-hour-old Drosophila embryo. This colored region of the genome we've imaged contains regulatory sequences and genes that are essential for the proper developmental patterning of the embryo. The specific colors from red to green to magenta denote the different parts of the sequence as shown in the linear map at the top. We have found the genome in a particular cell type does not fold in a single structure shared among all cells. Rather, it samples dynamically through complex 3D conformations. At first glance, these diverse conformations appear very disordered, seemingly messy tangles of a flexible thread. With just a few snapshots, there are not obvious differences in the structures arising in different cell types either. Both look like similarly randomly twisted threads. However, if we analyze the patterns from hundreds to thousands of snapshots from each cell type, we can see they are indeed far from random. Here, we have plotted for all thoracic cells the average distance between each element of the domain with each other element as a 2D map. Red color in the map denotes regions that are closer than expected, like this region between the red end of the sequence and the yellow-green portion of the sequence, whereas blue regions of the map denote regions that are further away than expected, like the separation here between the red end and the cyan middle end of the region of the sequence. The statistical patterns revealed in this averaging have a canny correspondence with the transcriptional regulation of the genes in this region. For example, DNA in thoracic cells have a statistical tendency, we can see, to cluster into two different domains. This first domain contains the UBX gene and its downstream enhancers, but not the upstream ones. Now, thoracic cells express UBX but genetic experiments show they require only these downstream intronic enhancers to do so, and it is those enhancers that lie in the domain which is more often physically close to the start site of the gene. By contrast, in abdominal cells, more copies of the UBX transcript are required, and the gene is therefore transcribed at higher levels. For this, it relies on information in the sequence of these upstream enhancers here, which we know from earlier experiments which mutated these enhancers. In these cells, the domain of high-frequency 3D proximity containing the UBX gene start site now also contains these upstream enhancers, but not the downstream ones. Thus, rather than a folding in a highly organized cell-type-specific 3D structure to bridge from distal enhancer to gene, 
the genome adopts a much more complex, much more dynamic organization. Well, 3D genome organization was often previously described as genome architecture is perhaps more apt to picture it as a genome dance. Seen in isolated snapshots, it is impossible to distinguish the unique rules and steps guiding each couple's movement. But when we see the ensemble of all of the different steps in the dance, it now becomes possible to distinguish one tune from another. Thus, the ability of our instruments to record many thousands of snapshots of this great detail, sampled from tissues containing many thousands of cells, we can start to appreciate the unique dances of the genome during development and developmental gene regulation. We have seen that these distinct cell types in some cases exhibit clearly distinct statistical patterns in the dance of their DNA, and that the differences in those patterns correlate nicely with differences in the regulatory elements in gene expression. But is this just correlative or also functional? And if it's functional, what components direct the tune and shape these different 3D dances at each part of the genome? My team have been combining genetic manipulations, both genome sequence and cellular components, with our advanced microscopy to help answer these questions. In one experiment, we removed a very small section of the genome sequence in a fly embryo. This deleted region aligns to the border of the two statistical contact domains we found in the abdominal cells separating the genes UBX and ABDA. The deletion did not alter the sequence of any of these genes, nor any of the enhancers. Embryos carrying the deletion exhibited strong alterations, though, to the statistical pattern of contacts, exhibiting much more frequent cross-border interactions, as you can see in this zoom-in view of the population average of normal and de border-deleted cells, or in individual snapshots. These structural changes were accompanied by altered gene expression and resulted in lethality of the embryos. With these technologies for genome editing and genome imaging, our team and a growing population of international collaborators and colleagues working independently are studying the mysteries of genome regulation. Several of our recently published and currently ongoing projects using these technologies are summarized here, showcasing the diverse and important exciting questions we can now investigate.